Hey everybody, I'm Bastard Larry Huggins here in beautiful Barcelona, Spain. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Every day in Jesus is a great day. Amen. Well, welcome to the good life. This is where we celebrate the good life that Jesus came for us to have so that you can be found living and enjoying that good life. You'd be surprised how different it, different it makes your day. If you have a, a Bible scripture, devotion, something good to think about for the rest of the day. It'll build your faith, right? And we have been in a series, a new series, uh, called uh, The In Him Devotion. Praise the Lord. We finished the Gospel of Paul. It went, uh, gosh, it went 50 some odd, maybe 55 uh, episodes. And now we're on the uh, In Him Devotion. I'm not going to predict how long it goes because I have the longest curated list of in him scriptures of anyone I know. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for everyone who's watching and participating. And I pray that today these in him scriptures will get in their spirit and get in their mind and transform the way all of us see everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. There's a word that I like. It's an interesting word. It's called neuroplasticity. And uh, children, when they come into the world, <clears throat> have this, this uh, neuroplasticity. It means the ability for the mind to learn quickly and absorb things very quickly. And children are born with that. And um, then as people you know, get older and older, it, they find it more difficult to learn, but I think I think uh, that that may be true to a certain part. There may be some atrophy or something there, but it's been proven that we can regain neuroplasticity. I said it if we continue to learn. Praise God! If we continue to study and read and learn and think and write and uh, you know have new experiences. And also, I think some of it may be genetics and some of it may be environment. But uh, for one thing, uh, we need to have a hunger for the Word of God and keep our minds fresh. Praise God. So this is going to benefit you on a lot of different levels. Let's talk about in him scriptures in the Gospels. I'm going to give you four in him quotes by Jesus. Now, you've probably heard me say this, but the majority of the in him scriptures are found in the epistles of Paul. In fact, uh, those of us who study the in him scriptures call it the Pauline revelation. And it's more than just who you are in Christ. It's his death, burial, resurrection, substitutionary sacrifice, what he's doing in heaven for us right now. But a large, large part of that Pauline revelation is the uh, the new creation realities, the in him scriptures, in Christ scriptures that tell us who we are, what we have, and what we can do because of our union with Christ. Very powerful stuff. Now, we'll find some of the in him scriptures in the Old Testament, Psalms and Isaiah. We'll find uh, a few of them in uh, the Gospels, which I'm going to share a few of those today. And then we'll find just a smattering of them in uh, in John and Peter. But the majority of these in him scriptures, and there are hundreds, are in the writings of Paul. Now, um, it, it is Paul's revelation because it originated with Jesus, but Jesus didn't need, need a revelation. He knew it from the foundation of the earth, God's plan for salvation. But he revealed it unto Paul when he caught him up into the third heaven. And so uh, Paul got this revelation directly from Jesus, and it changed the world. It certainly changed my world, and you stick with it, it'll change your world too. And so um, Jesus shared uh, quite a few in him scriptures with us, and he did it in the Gospels. And somebody says, well, that's, a, that's New Testament. Um, actually, no, uh, the New Testament didn't begin until Jesus offered up himself as a sacrifice. 
and his blood went on to the mercy seat in heaven to atone for our sins and to ratify the new covenant. Praise the Lord. The new covenant was was ratified or certified not by the blood of sacrifice sacrificial animals, but by the blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus. So a lot of people don't realize this, that most of the events that happened in the four Gospels were really still at the end of, of the age of the law or the Old Testament. And it wasn't until the resurrection of Jesus and people started getting born again that the New Testament began. So uh, just a, a little bit of trivia, but uh, I'll you know, I would have to say these are in him scriptures in the Old Testament, but they uh, are also in him scriptures in the four Gospels. Uh, but I'm only going to be talking about one Gospel today, and it's the Gospel of John, because John recorded more of these in him scriptures than the other writers of, of the Gospel. So let's start. Um, that's a long introduction. Let me get with it. John 10, 9, Jesus said, I am the door or the gate. By me, if a man enter in, he shall be saved and he shall go in and out and find pasture. What makes that an in him scripture? By me. By whom? By Christ. By Jesus. By me, Jesus. A man could go in and out and find pasture. Praise God. So we always ask ourselves when we see one of these prepositional phrases, by him, by Christ, by me, through me, for me, in me, with me, uh, with Jesus, with Jesus Christ, with the Messiah. You know, uh, there are a lot of different ways these prepositional phrases, a lot of different forms. But every time we identify one, and I've done the hard work for you, I've den identified hundreds of them, we have to ask ourselves, okay, uh, I'm in union with Christ, and what does this do for me? You know, uh, an in him scripture is something that I, I have or I can do, through my union with Christ, something I am, I have or I can do by virtue of my union with Christ. So what is it? Well, go in and out and find pastor. That is what he's saying. Is it by me, through me, in me? You can go in and out and find pasture. Why? Because he's the door to the sheepfold. We're his sheep, right? So we go in and out. Isn't that amazing that it says in and out? In other words, we still have a free will. And at will, we can enter into Jesus. <clears throat> now, there's two signs to that. Some people choose not to enter in. Even though they're, they are in Christ, they don't think about it. It doesn't mean that much to them, and they, they're not aware of it. And they don't actively, proactively make a decision, okay, I'm going to step further into Christ and find out more about who I am, what I have, and what I can do. And so he's always there for us to enter into. And most people live their lives kind of separated from Christ, which is wrong because our lives are hid with Christ in God. We should be aware of being in him all the time. And so here we have this phrase, go in and out and find pasture. And what's pasture? Well, it's uh, for the sheep, it's everything. It's their lives. It's their future. Uh, it's their protection. Uh, you know, they're good shepherd, uh, rivers of living water. I, I could, uh, the Amplified Bible says, go in and out freely. Praise God. So today we're going to go in, okay? <laughs> we're going to go in and we're going to find some, some um, pastures. So come and go with me through the, through the uh, door. Jesus, thank you for being our door. We're going to come in further and uh, enjoy pasture. We can, by me, a man can come in and out and find acceptance. We're accepted in the beloved. We can come in and out and find safety, salvation, preservation, peace. Uh, we can go in and find joy. We can go in and find peace. We can go in and find wisdom. We can go in and find power and authority and everything else because we're complete in him. Everything that you and I have need of is in Christ, and we can freely go in there and claim what's ours. What's already ours. That's good, isn't it? Okay, John 14, 20. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. So he's, he, he's aware that the new covenant hasn't begun yet. So he's prophesying. Jesus is prophesying. And he says, after that day, or at that day, what day? That's this day, <laughs> the new day, the New Testament day. 
the in him day. At that day you shall know that I am in the Father and ye in me and I in you. So because you're in Jesus and Jesus is in the Father, then therefore you are in the Father. Jesus is in the Father's house. You are in Jesus. That means you are in the Father's house. Jesus has rights and privileges in Father's house. You're in Jesus. That means you have rights and privileges. Amen. It's really, it's really simple. And once you start to see in him scriptures, you'll see them, uh, I hope, all the time. Praise God. I mean, I really ferreted them out. I really dug for them. I really searched and sifted and went through the scriptures like I was uh, looking for buried treasure. And I found buried treasure. Praise God. Uh, I'm not kidding you. My long curated list of in scriptures is the most valuable thing that I own. Praise the Lord. It really is. I treasure it. And uh, I refer to it often. I talk about it. It's the basis of my ministry, all my theology, all the miracles I've had that God's granted me in my crusades because of uh, knowing who I am in Christ and what I can do through Christ and all the other good things that have happened to me. Uh, my, my theology itself, my prophetic gift, it all goes back to who I am in Christ. And I've noticed that people who lack uh, a good comprehensive understanding of who they are in Christ make errors in theology, and, and they prophesy error, and they uh, frustrate God. <laughs> they're, they're asking and begging for things that he's already given them. And so life becomes a lot more simple when you know who you are in Christ. I'm going to have to pick up the pace here. <clears throat> John 17, 21. That, here's a prayer that Jesus prayed. That they may all be one as you, Father, are in me, and I'm in you, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me one, one. Jesus said, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me, because he's one. And now he's prayed that you and I will be one in him, one in them. So if you've seen Jesus, you've seen me. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know it's mind blowing, but as he is, so are we in this world. Praise God, we're made in the image of God. Uh, he's the firstborn of every creature. He's the firstborn of many brethren. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's given us his spirit. He's given us his DNA. He's the first, the only begotten, the first begotten, which means monogene, the original genetic blueprint for the perfect human being. The more we know about who we are in Christ, the more we begin to conform to who we really should be. Praise God. All right. One last scripture. <clears throat> Um, and this is the one that got me when I was kind of a, a youngster. Uh, John 4, 16, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. No one comes to the Father but by me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, and Jesus also said anyone who tries to come up another way is the same as, same as a thief and a robber. I know a lot of people who are trying to get to Jesus God by Buddha, thief and robber. The only way to get to the Father is by Jesus. Some people are trying to get there by Mohammed, thief and a robber. The only way to get to Father is by Jesus. He is the door. Nobody comes to the Father except by him. Nobody. Nobody. That's the truth. Praise God. Uh, Jesus doesn't send people to hell. They reject Jesus. He's their answer. He's their, he's their salvation. He's eternal life. And uh, everybody everybody will have an opportunity to hear uh, the gospel. If not to preach gospel, they'll see it in the stars. They'll see it in creation itself. If they're honest, if they're truthful, they'll understand there is one God and that he's a loving God and he's a redemptive God. So, yeah, nobody comes to the Father except by me. Uh, taking LSD is not going to get you to the Father Get your mind blown. <laughs> yeah, uh, people are saying uh, psych psychotropic or psychedelic drugs are the gateway to spirituality. Uh, wrong kind of spirit, open yourself up to the wrong kind of spirit. Nobody comes to the Father except by Jesus. Um, drugs aren't going to get you to the Father. Now see, I'm talking about actually my uh, my own experience when I was... When I was uh, 16 years old, I went to my Baptist pastor and I told him I wouldn't be back in church anymore. And he asked me why. 
And I said, well, I'm, I'm reading some books, and I'm not sure that Jesus is the only way. And I was. I was reading books. I read the Book of Mormon. I had, um, I had a couple of Mormon girlfriends when I was a teenager, and they wanted me to become a Mormon so they could marry me. And that was in South America. And so they gave me the Book of Mormon, and I read it. I, I, I couldn't wrap my brain around it. Uh, Moroni gold tablets. I was wondering how could he even carry these gold tablets? They must have weighed a ton. Anyway, I, I read it, and I read uh, I read other things. I read books on Buddhism. I read books on meditation. I read books on uh, nihilism and existentialism, and and you name it. And uh, uh, I was, uh, you know, it's kind of kind of new age before we called it new age. Uh, curious would be a better word. And every time I would try to get into something, I would hear this voice. Nobody comes to the Father except by me. I've gone over my time. No one comes to the Father except by me. And, and uh, gosh, uh, uh, finally one day, I, I, I woke up and said, you know, I'm, I'm knocking on the wrong door here. I'm, I'm <laughs> going the wrong direction. Nobody goes to the Father except by Jesus. And thank God for my Baptist upbringing because I learned that much. I learned it in Sunday school. Nobody comes to the Father except by Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, when you go to the Father, everything that you could ever want of is, is there in the presence of God, is fullness of joy. Let's spend time fellowshipping in Jesus, not just with Jesus, but in Jesus. Walk in Him, rest in Him, be in Him, and enter into the Father's house. Praise God. Well, I hope you got something out of this today, and uh, uh, next time I'll share a few in Him scriptures out of the Psalms and out of um, uh, Isaiah, give you some out of the Old Testament. They're very interesting. And then in the meantime, I want to invite you to Z Church, 10 o'clock a.m. Saturday morning, zchurch.life, be there or be square. Uh, I shouldn't have said that, but anyway, you're welcome there. You're going to have a good time, and, and I'll tell you right now, we're not square. <laughs> it's a hip place to be. And um, the uh, one last thing that I always say is make sure you keep it simple, sweetheart. Sometimes the most beautiful things can be so Simple